Well, greetings, beloved. Coming to you here on a beautiful October afternoon in Ohio. Leaves are starting to change. Seasons changing over. Cool air moving in. It's a beautiful day here at a local lake that has been dammed up many years ago to facilitate a recreational body of water. People fish here, people swim here, people camp here, um, various forms of recreation. They do a lot of boating. And you know, I just want to reflect on something here and, 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 and if we could parallel this to something spiritual. Because it was some time ago as I was here praying that God showed me the parallel of this dam in relation to the spiritual condition of mankind. And if you will we'll indulge me a moment, I'll share something out of Jeremiah that's very relative to this. And that Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 12 says this, Be astonished, all you heavens at this, and be horribly afraid. Be ye very desolate, saith the Lord, for my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed out cisterns, broken cisterns, that can hold no water. You know, when you look at this lake, you think, well, what a beautiful body of water and what a, uh, you know, it facilitates much recreation. But the original intention of this, this dam was, was to protect a city on down the river. This used to be a river. This was a river flowing through this valley. And it was a, it was a, it was a life-giving force. It was a constant flow, just like the Spirit of God is supposed to be to the people of God. And here in Jeremiah we see the indictment that the people have done something that has grieved the heart of God, and that is they have they have stopped the flow of something. They've forsaken the flow of something and they've hewn out something. And just like this lake was created to keep the city down the river from being flooded so that they can control the amount of water that comes down through this valley and incrementally let it out on the other side which is called a spillway and at this spillway the water is released incrementally if the if the rain causes the the, the lake to rise high on these rocks which it has come up very high on these rocks dangerously high then that gate is designed to let out just a certain amount of water uh, and protect the city and, and, and it, yes it raises the river very high but it backs the water up into the lowlands up below the up above the lake that are designed to contain that water and if you could parallel here with me parallel here with me that when you think about religion and you think about denominationalism and you think about all these 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 man-made ways that we've tried to box God in. We've tried to dig these cisterns and, and contain him. We've tried to contain him. And the truth of the matter is that God cannot be contained. That his spirit will never be stymied. He is ever flowing. He is ever moving. But mankind's what is available to mankind by his spirit can be stymied in this in this way that if we allow doctrines and the ways of men and the teachings of men and the denominational labels and all these things that we uh, consider to be um, part of godliness if we allow them to supersede that simple intimate relationship with god through his spirit then you see we have we have done the same thing that this lake has done. We have dammed up and tried to contain God in a containment. And we no longer allow him to flow freely. And and just like this river used to flow down through this this valley, the, the, the Corps of Engineers came in here 
several decades ago and dug this valley out and made it affordable for water to collect in it. And such we have done with religion. We have, we have done the very same thing by creating all of our labels and our, our, our perceptions of God and tried to box them into a denominational box, whether it be a Catholic or a Baptist or a Methodist, you name it. And we've tried to somehow put God in a straitjacket and contain him and, and control him and only let out so much of him to the masses. That's actually what the clergy have done. That they have, they have tried to use a controlled method to only feed the people what they feel that the people need to eat. Instead of being conduits from heaven, conduits that God can use and directly manifest himself through them and feed the people what heaven's desire is to feed them. And if you'll notice, over to my right, I don't know how well you can see them, but perched here are approximately eight buzzards right on the pinnacle of these rocks. And at any given time, there could be 20 or 30 of them there. They just collect here on the pinnacle of this lake and they just ominously watch over you know obviously they're waiting for something to die that's what they eat they eat dead things and they fly over this dam constantly like in, in hordes and it's almost like it typifies the, the false doctrines or the, the, the seducing spirits or as it talks about in Revelation chapter 18 the unclean birds the caged spirits, the, the contained spirit, the spirits that want to contain God with their doctrines, these doctrines of devils that have been produced to stymie God. And folks, what is the gist of this? The gist of this is this. May we forsake the cisterns that we've hewn out. May we forsake the ideologies of man and get back to the flow of God and what he intends to give his church. Let us put aside all the labels and all, all the containments, everything that we've hewned out, and let us get back to crying out for a true expression of God. Let us get back to crying out for what God wants for his people. The flow of his spirit, the manifestation of his son, in the midst of his people. Let us chase off these birds, these foul birds, these doctrinal birds, these lying birds of containment. Let us cry out to God that he will once again visit his church with revival power, the outflow and inflow of his very spirit, and let us put aside all those things that stymie him and keep him from operating the way that he wants to operate. Beloved, let us cry out in unison. Let us turn away from the cisterns again and get back to the river of God. God bless you all. And pray, pray, pray. Pray without ceasing the Lord will turn this river loose again. Much love.